I don't see it. I'm supposed to be figuring out a method for finding the area of a parallelogram? I just don't see how to do it. Now you know what I do when I don't see how to solve a geometry problem? I get my man Harvey to help out. How's it going, Harvey? He can see things that aren't there, so he's crazy good at geometry. Got a parallelogram. What do you see, Harvey? Rectangle? No, no, Harvey. We're doing parallelograms today. You know, opposite sides parallel. Rectangle means all the angles are right angles, but you can see these are slanted here. Make a rectangle? Cut off a right triangle? From where? From the end? I mean, I, I just go and saw this off? That's going to come right off. You say so. It did. All right, now what do I do with it? Put it over on the end? Okay, you say so. Slide it over. Wait a second, you're telling me that's just going to fit right in there? I don't buy it. Hold on. Let's put that back over here. Why is that going to work? I'm going to slide that right back onto the end of the parallelogram there. Why can that just fit in there so nicely? The angles add up? Oh, he's right. The angles add up. These two sides are parallel, so this angle plus this angle equals 180 degrees. So I'm going to grab this triangle and slide it over here. This angle plus this angle in here, those two add up to 180 degrees. So that means we can just slide this triangle in here. And these go together and make a nice straight line there. So we do, we have a rectangle. You can see that from the angles now. This is a right triangle, so that's a right angle. And that means this is a right angle as well. These two sides, the top and the bottom, are parallel. So these two angles right here, they have to add up to 180 degrees. This one's already 90, so this one has to be 90 as well. We have ourselves a rectangle. And we know how to find the area of a rectangle. That's awesome, Harvey, right there. All right. We know how to find the area of a rectangle. It's just the base times the height. It's the product of the two dimensions. And when we move these pieces around, we're not changing the area of the parallelogram when we took the triangle from here over to there. So the area of the parallelogram is also the base times the height. And also, this is a rectangle, so the top here, that's a B as well. Now, when we're moving this piece back and forth, the area isn't the only thing that stays the same. The area stays the same, but so does the length of this bottom side. So we move this from here over to there. All we're doing is moving a piece of the bottom from the left to the right. We can move it back. So this bottom of this parallelogram, its length is also B. I'm going to go ahead and put that height back in there. So now we also see that the opposite sides of a parallelogram have the same length. All right, so we've got our area of a parallelogram now. It's just the base times the height. And the height is the distance between these opposite sides. And these opposite sides are equal in length. What's that? Oh, you don't buy my explanation of the opposite sides being equal in length. That is a little fishy. When you get into more advanced geometry, you'll find a better way to prove it. But here's how I convinced myself. I thought it was a little fishy, too. So I made this thing right here. It's a parallelogram. I've got the, op I've got the sides marked. This one's 6.4. This one's 4.4 in length. Now watch this. I'll grab this. I can just slide this across. It stays 4.4 all the way. Same thing with the other side. 6.4 all the way. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking I just made this little thing, put the numbers on there, and the numbers won't change even if the lengths do change. But check this out. See, numbers are changing, lengths are changing, numbers are changing. I'm not trying to trick you, at least not now. Hey, wait a second. I see something else that's pretty fishy. Check this out. Harvey, I don't quite buy your explanation of the area. Take a look at this. How are you going to chop this up and make a rectangle? Got you now, don't I? I got him. What? There's still a rectangle? Now you can't chop this slide one little piece and... Check this out. Check it out, Harvey. All right, right here, right here. All right? Parallelogram, still a parallelogram. So it's parallel to this. These two are parallel, and we want to show that this times the distance between these two opposite sides is the area, because we don't want to have a different formula for this parallelogram as for this one. 
but you can't just chop this, slide it over, and make a rectangle. Check this out, Harvey. Check this out. Yeah, you see it too, don't you? Yeah, right. We're going to put this right up here. All right, Harvey. Where's the rectangle? This isn't a rectangle. One, two, three, four, five, six sides. Six sides, not four. Where's the rectangle? I got him. What? Put it back? Okay. Where's the rectangle, Harvey? Outside the parallelogram. Okay. All right. Extend this. Extend the top and the bottom. All right. Extend this out. And come down here. Make a right angle there. And do the same thing down the bottom. All right. Now what? Label the sides. Okay. We'll call that the height still. It's the distance between the opposite sides. And we'll call this... B and B, and we'll call that X. And well, this is a rectangle. This is a rectangle, so this is B plus X. That means this up here has to be B plus X. Now what do we do? Find the area of the parallelogram. Oh, yeah. This is that cool strategy we used, we've used a bunch of times with area. We express the area of the parallelogram in terms of pieces we can handle. We can handle the rectangle. We can handle the right triangles. All right, let's do that. So the area of the parallelogram is the area of the rectangle minus the areas of the triangles. So the area of the rectangle, well, that's just h times b plus x. This dimension times this dimension. And then we have to subtract off the areas of the two right triangles. The area of a right triangle is just 1 half times the product of the legs, times h times x. And we have to multiply by 2 because we have two of these right triangles. So to figure this out, well, we'll go ahead and expand this product. h times b is hb. h times x is hx. 2 times a half, that's just 1, times h times x minus h times x. Sure enough, hx minus hx, that's just 0. And we're left with h times b, which is, of course, the same thing as the base times the height. So this parallelogram, base times height. This parallelogram, base times height. No matter how you do it, you've got base times height. It's pretty awesome, hard right there. Yeah, all right. What's that? Uh, animation. Oh, oh, there is another one. Oh, that's nice. Check this out. Harvey made this for us. Parallelogram. Base is 4, height is 5, area is 20. Let's see what happens when we slide this around. Just move in the other side of the parallelogram along this line. It's parallel to AB down here. And no matter how you slice it, the area of the parallelogram is the base times the height.